What's up YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. Uh, let's go ahead and finish the Ohm's Law trilogy here in our Solar Basics videos. First time we talked about voltage, second time we talked about current. What's left? That's resistance. Okay, so what is resistance? Resistance is the opposition that an electrical device has to the flow of electrical current. Um, anything that electricity passes through has some level of resistance. Uh, a resistor is a device that has a particular known resistance. Resistance is measured in ohms, which is named after George Simon Ohm, who is a German physicist. So to understand ohms, we're going to go back to our um, analogy of the water tanks. Now as you can see in this picture on the left, we have a greater flow because the pipe is wider the wider pipe represents less resistance. On the right side we have less current which is less uh, flow because we have a more restricted pipe. Given the same voltage um, the current's different because the resistance is different. So resistance can come from the the diameter of the pipe in our example but it can also come from interference so say we have some hair or some dirt or something in the pipe that's resisting or opposing that flow that can also cause resistance obviously in electrical terms we don't have hair and dirt and so forth but we do have uh, electrons and, and other and the, the makeup of the material that can cause the resistance so we talked about diameter, but we can also talk about length, which is the other and third source of resistance. So the length of the tube or the length of the wire uh, in electrical terms can also greatly increase the resistance. Okay, so here you see the, uh, the main components of Ohm's Law. We have V for volts, we have I for uh, current, and we have R for resistance. And these are the three formulas that you can use to calculate between the three. But basically on this uh, pyramid you can cover up the variable that you want to solve for and then the other, the, the other formula will appear. So if you covered up V you would take I times R and that would equal your uh, voltage. So what does this mean for solar or for uh, electricity in general? Um, basically, it's going to have to do with the length and the width of your wire. So when you're, when you're looking at um, setting up your system, you need to think about how thick the wire needs to be, and that's going to determine the resistance of the wire, which is going to determine how much uh, current you can run through that safely. Which leads me to another concept that it's important to understand, and that is voltage drop. So given a, a, an amount of resistance, from one side to the other side of the wire or whatever material you're transmitting your electricity through there's a concept of voltage drop and that is how much the resistance plays upon the voltage if the voltage starts out 12 volts on one side but you have a really long wire with high resistance you're going to end up with 11 and a half or whatever on the other side and so that's what's called voltage drop so as I mentioned a minute ago, also the material uh, can cause resistance. So it's important when, when selecting your wire, selecting your materials, that you know what material you are conducting through. So in this picture we have silver, we have aluminum, we have copper, and so obviously there's a hierarchy of, of what are the best conductors. Uh, copper is generally going to be your best conductor for the dollar. Silver is better, but it's a much more expensive material. And that's all there is to resistance. So now we've talked about the relationship between these three elements and how they make up Ohm's Law. We'll do a final video um, follow-up really of how to apply these principles, how to use it to do calculations and so forth, and introduce watts um, as we talk more about ap applying Ohm's Law to your solar panel systems, your wind turbine systems, whatever you've got. Uh, making power, you're going to need Ohm's Law. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys.